hello i hope you're all well if you are new around here then hi it's nice to meet you and if you're returning then thank you very fucking much for coming back my name is alana and i'm a 35 year old lady living in scotland and that is where the accent is from and this channel is predominantly all about skincare beauty a little bit of hair care travel bloggery vlogging bullshit but with a liberal sprinkling of sarcasm and cynicism and truth thrown in on top not to mention a little bit of new mum content because my baby is now nearly How's that happened? I do not know. Today's video though is going to be a full face of one brand and you've guessed it, it's Seventeen Cosmetics and this is the look that I've created today. It's a very pinky red look, very plum autumnal look and if this is the kind of thing that you're into then you might just enjoy this video. But word of warning we do like a sweary word on this channel such as fuck shite and bugger and if you're not into that kind of thing then please feel free to be Kate at any point. There's a subscription button in the corner if it does sound like your cup of tea and I do like to to Babylon and ramble. If you feel like it's getting too much for you, just put me on at one and a half speed and I'll go a lot quicker. Anyway, grab yourself a tea, a coffee, a cuppa, a wine, feeling fine, whatever the fuck you like, and let's just get into this. Oh, this coffee is very much needed. I have found, tangent by the way, that since my son has become six months and older, he'll be seven months at the end of October, I am more tired than I ever was in the newborn stage. Is it just me? I'm speaking to a couple other people I know who had babies a few years ago, maybe they've got 15 year olds now and they were like, oh no, yeah, yeah. That's the hard stage. Like everybody warns you about the newborn stage, but I'm gonna tell you something right now. Jack was an angel as a newborn. I'd put him down somewhere, he'd stay there, and then he'd maybe sleep, he'd maybe poop, he'd maybe want a bottle. That was it. He slept at night. Angel. Now, <laughs> I am so tired. Not because he's up overnight, I have to say. I'm lucky that way. But just general looking after a child during the day and they just need you all the time. I have never been so tired in my life. So, I'm gonna really test out some concealer today and stuff like that. So we're doing 17 cosmetics. Get yourself comfortable. As you know, I love a tangent. But I have been using these products now for probably the better part of the last month. I think I picked up the first couple of bits of 17 before my holiday and I picked up the last couple of bits over the last couple of weeks. So I have picked up enough now to do a full face. And just before we get started on what I'm going to put on my face, I'm going to put here, because I'm going to tally it up and I'm not going to do it in my head right now, how much all of the products in this video cost me. Because this is a budget beauty brand, I'm going to put it right here to let you know, I don't know what the conversion is for other countries, I'm really sorry, but in UK, British pounds, right there. That is how much this cost me, all of the makeup in this video. Okay, so I'm going to bring you a little closer because we're going to do a little bit of base first. Alright, so to kickstart us off, we're going to use the Glow Is Everything cream. And I got mine in the shade 003 P. Now in the concealer, I think I already mentioned this, I picked up 001P. Uh, I'll speak about the concealer when I'm using it, but I just thought considering this is for the base and this is for lightening and brightening, that is the two shades that I picked up. And I picked up a pink one because as you can probably see, I am quite a pink, ruddy Scottish person. That's just the way it is. So I'm going to pop a bit of this on. As I said already, this isn't a first impressions. I have been using these. So I'm going to put a little bit on the back of my hand and then I'm going to buff it in with a brush. Now I'm going to use my Larafay F19 for this. It's a really nice kind of buffing brush and it has a little bit of an angle on it. It's really, really dense and fluffy. It's very, very good. Now what I will say about this, I've used it with my fingers as well and applied it that way. This is a little bit like the e.l.f. Halo Glow or the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless if you want to say that. This is like the glow version from Seventeen Cosmetics but I'll tell you right now, it's very very nice. What I will also say is if you're someone who has oily skin then maybe this one isn't for you. They do a foundation version as well. I'm going to stick a little photo here so you can see it. It is slightly different. This is definitely the glowy one. But for me, having slightly drier skin, having slightly older skin as well, not old skin, I know I'm not old, but just not youthful like teenage skin, 
I find this one is probably more flattering. I haven't picked up the foundation, so I can't say that for definite, but I'm really enjoying this one. The reason I'm giving you the word of warning is though, because I think that if you are someone who was oilier, then this might be a little greasy on you. So as you can see, that is it on this side of my face. So the coverage isn't bad. You can see that it's more of a skin tint. You can still see parts of my skin through, but the coverage, it tints the skin, it makes it look a little bit more healthy rather than ruddy and red, right? It's quite nice. It does leave the skin nice and dewy, but not frosty. There's no kind of shimmer in this, there's no kind of glow that way. It's just a really nice dewy finish to the skin. And there we go. It's just really nice sheen. That's all I can say, it's very, very good. Now for the concealer, I might go on with that after I've done the eyes because obviously if I get any fall down or anything, I want to conceal that. I picked up this little palette here, which is the Reds palette, which I believe is limited edition for this time of year, this season, all that kind of stuff, autumnal shades. Now I have been using this as well. I done a really kind of what I thought was gonna be a neutral look on Instagram with this one and this one, but this is very pigmented. The shadows in this palette are unbelievably pigmented considering this costs a fiver. And then we went away for the weekend and I ended up using this one and this one and maybe a little bit of the pink as well, just for like a plummy look and it was sensational, gorgeous. These in the middle, what I'm gonna say is, I'll maybe swatch them for you. These are obviously shimmer shades and they're very, very soft. You can see it there as I put my finger in. Just gonna swatch them on the back of my hand there so you can see them. They're lovely, they're beautiful. They are extremely pigmented for a little five pound palette. But when they're on the eye, I feel they maybe all look a little bit the same. Maybe it's just the way that I've been using the palette. Um, but for instance, when I've done the really plummy look, I wanted to use this one a little more. And then I used this one with just this shade, I think. And it finished a beautiful... It's almost got a little pink sh shift to it as well. It's not just a coppery tone. It's got a pink shift in it as well. I don't know if you're going to see that there. So they are a little bit similar once they get on the eye, but regardless of that, they are very, very beautiful. I'm sure if you were doing something like cut creases and things like that, that they would be amazing and very, very pigmented. But it's just a little word of warning. I think that these are a little bit similar, but still, for a fiver, gorgeous. All right, so just before I go any further as well, I thought I should talk about the eye crayon. I'm gonna talk about that while I'm putting on the shades. Now I'm gonna go into this one here, which is a kind of neutral peachy shade, first of all, just for a bit of an all over the lid thing. Now the eye crayons, I have to say, I was sorely disappointed with. I love an eye crayon, and I think you can get lots of really good budget ones in the drugstore or in smaller brands like Kiko and stuff like that. Is Kiko leaving the UK, by the way, because the one at Silverburn has shut down. I don't know if the one in the town center is still there, but I just wondered if they were leaving the UK. Maybe they've flopped a little bit through the pandemic. I just wondered, does anybody know? So the pencils, as I'm saying, you can pick up other ones from other brands, Elf and things like that as well. These ones aren't great. They go on okay. I did use them for one look that I'd done over on Instagram and it worked, but I wouldn't rush to buy any more. So today I do want to do a really plummy and autumnal look. So I'm gonna go into this shade here. And I'm just gonna do a little bit of a halo eye with it today. So I'm going on the outer corners of the eye on each side and the inner corners. Now I'm really hoping that you can see just how pigmented these shadows are. I am not like in this, I am tapping in here and they are so pigmented. I also found that when I wore them throughout the day, they didn't crease or budge or anything like that. They stayed as vibrant throughout the day. I have to say this little palette has really, really impressed me. And I don't have a base down. I don't have like, you know, as I said, a pencil below this. I don't have any concealer on below this. And that is how pigmented they are. So I'm just kind of shearing that out a little bit as we get higher towards the brow bone. I may meet it over the top, but we'll sort that out in a little minute. Now, when I used this the first time the other day, as I said, I went into that kind of rust shade here, thinking, oh, I'm gonna make just like a nice neutral eye. And then before I knew it, I had a full on orange smoky look and I didn't really mean to do that. So I would say you use these with care. I don't know if all of the palettes are as pigmented, but the reds one certainly does the job. Now on the inner corner, I'm gonna go into this one here, first of all, and just build up a little softer 
red color or a pinky color before I put on that plum. Okay, so I went back into the slightly darker shade again and I'm just gonna go right in the corner here. And actually, I think I could go in with the deepest shade as well, this one, and just deepen that up ever so slightly. So it's a little bit more plummy and autumnal than Barbie pink. There, that's, that's more the tones that I wanted to go for. So I basically just went between the dark one and the plum colored one. And if I feel like it's getting a little out of hand and patchy, I'm going back in with the original brush with the kind of peachy tone on it and just running that over the top of the edges to soften that up a little bit. There we go. So I'm now gonna take a bit more like a paddle brush and just pop on the shimmery ones. Now what colour do I want to use? I think I'm gonna, go, oh, like, let's go with the goldy one so I can show you what I mean first because then if I wanna top it with a purple, that's more vibrant and it'll probably overtake it. And there we go there. So I'm hoping you will be able to see it is a very soft and subtle shimmer. It's gorgeous, gorgeous on the lid, look at that color. But it is very soft and subtle. These shimmers are not gonna be ones that you're like, oh my God, these shimmers are insane. They're not, they're just not. But it's a fiver palette, so what do you kinda want? But what I will say is they are very, wearable shimmers. They are ones that you would definitely get away with on the day to day and especially at this time of year. And there we go, it's very fiery, very good. But I'm gonna stick the purple one over the top because you know, I just need to. It's gonna put that right in the center, the purple one. I'm not gonna take it up as high, but I'm gonna put it on the mobile lid and in the center. Oh, look at that, oh my God. So maybe I should take it back because that purple one, that is knocking out of the park. That one is really, really nice. There we go. So I'm just gonna do the underneath as well. You know what I'm like, I'll probably just do a mirror image of that. And there we go. So we just got like kind of pinky, orangey and the purpley tones underneath. And again, I'm gonna take that super duper purpley shimmer shade and I'm just gonna pop that right here on the tear ducts. So it pops a little. And then I'm gonna go into that kind of more golden tone and pop that under there. And there we go. Gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. So while I've got you zoomed in, I'm gonna curl my lashes and then use the mascara. It's got a very conical wand, if you wanna call it that. Considering the price of it, I think that the finish it gives you, it's a little bit voluminous, it's still lengthening as well. And as far as I can remember from the times I've used it over the last few weeks, it hasn't had a lot of fall down. Maybe a tiny bit, but not loads. And there we go, that is it on both sides of my lashes. Like I say, is it gonna make me hang up my lash doll or my sky high or anything like that? Probably not, but for the price of it, I think this is a really nice mascara. I've not found there's been a lot of fall down with it, and I have to say, for the price and for what it does, it's a pretty nice little mascara. Okay, so I could keep you zoomed in and show you the brows as well, but the truth is I already done that in another video, showed you me using this. So I'm just gonna quickly put this on. This is the Precise Definition Tinted Gel, and I picked it up in brown. This is not a winner for me. This is one that I would say, if you're gonna pick something up from 17, maybe leave these at the door. And the reason I'm saying that is, I feel like they almost get a bit carried away with themselves. They're maybe just a little too wet, that might mean that I need to let it give it time to dry out a little bit. Sometimes with mascaras, I feel like that as well. When I'm using it, it's it's okay, it's good. It kind of pulls the brows up, but I have very, very dark brows, as I've mentioned before. And what I find this does sometimes is add a little more warmth than I want it to. Now, at the moment, my hair is very washed out and it's very light for me, so I'm getting away with it. But in a general day-to-day -day situation, I have very dark brows and I feel like this makes them look a little warm. Like it's just, it just gets a little messy. I find that I put it on and then when I look at myself close up in a mirror, it's like actually the color is above where my eyebrow is. I don't know how it happens. It's just a little too much for me. I just want the color to be going through my brows and maybe if I want to dip into the middle of the brow and fill in some sparse spaces, I might do that. 
I don't really know how to explain it any other way, but I just have other brow gels that I prefer. So now I'm going to go in with blush. I'm going to use this one. I did do a look over on Instagram uh, with a complete kind of pink look. And actually I used this one and I used this one, which is the powder blusher, as well as a bit of a mid-tone blush. I also used this and mixed it in with the liquid highlighter too. And actually it looked beautiful. We'll go into the liquid highlight a little bit more detail in a minute. But these blushes are amazing. I've said it a million times, they're so, so good. If you're looking for a little bit of a dupe of some expensive cream blushes, then these are amazing. I'm gonna put the soft peach, is it called? Yeah, the soft peach one on today because the eyes are a little bit out there. I feel like I just wanna keep a little bit more of a neutral blush on the cheeks. I feel like you could wear this with a soft neutral look. You could wear it with a yellow look. You could wear it with a, you know, an eyeliner and a red lip. Like it's very, very wearable color. There we go, very, very simple, very, very easy to get on. It doesn't go crazy all over the place. So I think as well, if you're someone who's a little bit scared of blush, especially cream blush, this is a winner. It's not getting too outrageous, but it's still got color on the face. It still looks like there's something there and it's very easy to blend. It doesn't lift whatever it is that's on underneath it. It's a beautiful texture. It leaves a little bit of a sheen. Tremendous. So as I said, we're gonna get into the highlighter and this one is the rose one. So it's meant to be a little bit of a pink highlighter. I would dispute that. I'd say it's just a general kind of light champagne-y color, but it's not gold. It's definitely a little bit more on the silver side. That might sound a little bit scary. I'm just gonna tap it on my hand there so you can see. It's bright, yes. But what I tend to do is I will tap it on my hand and then I tap it and shear it out again before I am going on to the tops of the cheeks with it because I don't want it to be super duper frosty. And I think with this, there is a little bit of chunky glitter in it. There is ever so slightly a little bit of chunky glitter. So when I mixed it with the pink cream blush, it was lovely. But I do find that you might think this gets a little bit more chunky. I don't, I don't know how to explain it. Hold on and I'll just zoom you in and let you see. Can you see it a little bit better there? So there's actual little flecks of, maybe there, can you see it there? Actual flecks of glitter on my cheek as opposed to that beautiful kind of easy, lit from within glow that a lot of people prefer nowadays. This is actual chunks of glitter, I have to say. So as far as highlighter is concerned, I think it is a really nice highlighter. I think, again, for a cheap and cheerful highlighter, it's very, very pretty. I'm actually gonna apply a little bit to the top of my Cupid's bow as well. I mean, it's effective, you can't deny that. And a little bit in between the bridge of my nose there, just here. But if you were to see me in real life, I think you would notice the chunky bits of glitter. So will I buy another one of these? Probably not. But will I mix it in with other blushers and stuff like that and use it up? Absolutely. I might even use it as a bit of a Halloween vampire skin look. Why not? So while we've got you zoomed in, why don't we do a little bit of concealing? And as I said, I picked up the colour 001P. Now, what I am going to say about this is... I'm really enjoying it. I'm so surprised at the fact that I'm really enjoying it. I'm just gonna put it around about my nose. Now you can see the color that's went on there. It's very light. I'm gonna put a little bit down here as well over my pigmentation, uh, a little bit there. And I'm gonna put a little bit here and a little bit here. Now the reason I'm saying watch the color of it because this oxidizes something unreal. Now. For me, that's okay, because maybe if I picked it up in the actual colour that it said it was, when it's in the tube, it would have been a little light for me, but the 001P is the lightest colour you can get, and I don't know if you can see this oxidising at the moment, but I can assure you it is. Okay, so I would say that's only been maybe a minute and a bit, and look how yellow it's went. I have not blended anything yet. It has went pretty yellow, right? So it definitely, definitely oxidizes. But what I will say is, it then matches the base pretty well, and I don't mind it. I think it actually goes really well on my skin. But the reason that I'm telling you is just for a little word of warning, in case you think, okay, I am super duper pale and I need a pale color, I have picked up the palest color in this, and it definitely goes a little bit yellow. But once blended out, it stays in place, it doesn't make me feel like as if I'm getting super duper creepy. 
it's really good for this like tidying up jobby. I feel like as if it is a really comfortable wear as well. It's not one that I feel like I am dry and paper bag like. So actually this really impressed me. Despite the fact that it does go a little yellow, I suppose it's just lucky that it's went yellow in a way that is flattering to my skin tone. Because every other aspect of it is absolutely beautiful. I'm now going to put on a little bit of bronzer, but this is not a bronzer, this is just a powder, a pressed powder. And I picked it up in 070, and it's obviously far too dark for me, but I've been using it as a bronzer. And I have to say, I think it's a really good match for a bronzer for me. It does a really nice job. It is a little bit orangey, but it's not an actual bronzer, so what can I say? I think if I use it with a fairly light hand, it just adds a little dimension to my face. It looks really nice. Nobody said you needed to use a bronzer. You can quite easily use a powder to do some contouring on your face as well. I think it's a really beautiful pigmented product as well. I don't feel like I have to be really swirl, swirl, swirling my brush in or anything like that. I'm just gonna put a tiny bit across my nose there. And they did have bronzers, but to be fair, they were super duper shimmery and not really up my street. So if you were looking for an option for a little bit more of a matte bronzer, a little softer look rather than looking super duper frosty, then this would probably be it. There we go. So I'm just going to take my hair down and what I'm going to do is my lip because I have to say the absolute astounding winner from this collection. This lip pencil and this lipstick is amazing. I'm saying that, but this palette is amazing. The blushes are amazing. There is so much in this collection of a budget beauty brand that I am absolutely blown away with. So this is just the Lip Define pencil and I picked up the shade Red Berry. So I'm gonna just overline my lips ever so slightly on the cupid's bow. I find this blends really well on your finger as well. Like if you want a softer blend of your lip liner it works beautifully. Now, the lipstick that I picked up, I picked up one of the cream lipsticks rather than the matte ones. But actually, this isn't super duper sheeny. It's just a really nice, comfortable matte. I would say more like a satin. And I got the color purple red, but it's more like a berry red, to be honest with you. Now, what I've been doing is putting it like in the middle of my lips here and then blotting it out and making that really blurred lip that I quite like. But today I'm gonna to put it on as a full Buna lipstick so you can see the pigmentation of it as well. The other thing I would say is, it's sweet smelling like berry. It's more like you're putting on a berry lip balm, but the pigmentation is unreal. And there we go. I think this is absolutely beautiful. It is a stunning lipstick. It is so, so comfortable. It's a beautiful color for this time of year, that kind of bitten lip. It's absolutely beautiful. I love it. I love the lipstick. It is such a winner. And there we go. Personally, I think this is stunning. It's so, so beautiful. It's so pigmented. As I said, my winners and the ones I would probably say to leave, palettes are gorgeous. For a fiver, you can't go wrong. Lipsticks, absolutely fucking beautiful. Hands down, so comfortable wearability they're gonna come off they are gonna come off but that's just the way of it with a lipstick most lipsticks even the most expensive ones might do that lip liners absolute winner powder blush now i'm gonna say this it's okay i'm not gonna rush to pick up any more of these it's a really pretty color and for this time of year i'm really enjoying it but what i would say is that i have other blushers that have more dimension and a little bit more something interesting to them so will i pick up any more of these probably not but it's a very very nice color and again for the price of the blusher you can't go wrong the cream blushers however i would go and tell you to pick up every fucking single one of them because they're amazing. Although, don't do that. Pick up the ones you just want, you know? I think there was a couple there that's like more like a really soft pink, like Barbie pink or cotton candy pink, rather than this really vibrant pink. Uh, and I can't remember if there's a nude one or what have you. I think there's about four colors. And these two are the ones that speak to me, so I'm not gonna pick any more up, but they are phenomenal. They're really, really beautiful blushes. The highlighters, I think are very good. I think they definitely give you that sheen on the cheek and if that is what you're looking for, perfection. But they definitely have a little bit of chunky glitter in there and that is just my word of warning to you. The base products, what I'm gonna say is this, as I said already, the base is beautiful. It's very, very sheeny, it's very, very glowy. But if you are an oily skinned person, that might not be for you. They have another option of foundation. The concealer is lovely. 
It's very, very good. I will highly recommend this, especially as a budget beauty item. This is fantastic. I really enjoy it. I'm not someone who has terrible dark circles under my eyes, so someone who does might dispute that with me, or if you're someone who has a lot of acne scarring and you need a really high coverage, heavy duty concealer, then maybe you will differ your opinion with me on that. But what I will say is, for a little concealer that costs like a couple of quid, I am absolutely blown away with this. Absolutely blown away. I think it's really, really good, but just be aware of that oxidization as well when you're picking a color. The powders, very, very nice. Will I swap this out for any of my bronzers? Maybe not. But what I will say is the powders are very, very nice. So if you are someone who likes a powder, as a makeup option, then I think these are very, very beautiful. They blend easily. I've not got any patchiness or anything like that. They're easy to put on. Really, really enjoyed this. The things that I'm a little bit on the fence about, probably the mascara. I think it is a nice mascara for the price of it. For what it does, it's pretty. But I do think there's better op options at the drugstore, although not at this price. The other two things that I'm gonna say, absolutely just leave them, is the brow product and the eye crayons, which I'm really disappointed in because I love a budget eye crayon. I love it when an eye crayon just kicks the arse out those super duper expensive ones from like Laura Mercier or Vive or whatever. But this one just does not do it. And the same with the brow product. It's just not for me. I just have other ones that I prefer and even other ones from the drugstore that I prefer that aren't that much more expensive. So I would say leave this one in the drugstore. And that is everything. I hope you've enjoyed that. I hope you like this look. I hope you like the full face of one brand and the budget beauty side of things as well. As I said at the start, everything in this video cost me ding amount of money but also if you have an advantage card look out for deals because i went in one week and where products were supposed to be costing four pound it was only, i was getting it for like two pound or two pound fifty because i had an advantage card so that is why these products cost me that much money just in case you go looking and you think that doesn't tally up she can't count but i can assure you that's how much it cost me so that's when I'm going to leave it and I will see you again in the next one. Let me know if there's any other companies you want to see me do this with. None like, you know, a full face of Tom Ford or anything like that because that would be fucking mental. But please let me know if there's anybody else you want to see me do this with and I will get back to you on it soon. Have you tried any of it? Let me know. Comment down below. Do all that kind of bullshit and I will see you all again soon. Bye bye. Ooh.